What's up guys and welcome back once again to the reviews. Today I'm going to be looking at another cooler from Thermalright, so thank you to them for sending us over. And today I'm looking at the classic low profile CPU cooler SI100 in black. Um, so we'll get it unboxed, have a look at it, see what it's like. Uh, and then we'll get it installed onto the test system, which is a 5900X. And we'll see how well it performs. So as mentioned in the intro to this video, this is the classic SI100 in black. This is a low profile cooler. Um, like I said, it'll be going on a 5900X, so we'll see how well it performs. Um, so let's have a quick look at the specifications. Um, so the fan on it is a standard 120 mil fan, so that means you will be able to put whatever fan you want on it. So if you've got uh, some RGB ones or anything like that you want to use, then you can use them on this. Um, up to 2000 RPM, uh, it doesn't show what the minimum is, but up to 2000 RPM at 27.7 decibel noise level. With an airflow of 72.37 and a static pressure of 2.87, so it's quite high. Uh, standard 4, 4 pin PWM and it's an SFDB bearing V2. Not, to be honest with you, not sure. A fluid dynamic bearing, I assume. Now, in terms of compatibility, we've got AMD, it says AM4 and AM5, and it also says Intel 1150 series, 1200, 1700, and 2066. Um, I'm not sure if it supports any of the earlier ones of AMD. Uh, it probably will do, but um, I'll put that up on the screen and let you know if it does. Uh, Multi fan configurations, uh, performance fan. It's optimised for compatibility and you get a premium thermal paste in this as well. And then the heatsink itself is 120mm tall uh, by 108 by 74 sorry, 74 tall. Um, so it should be compatible with a lot of cases, but it is still it's quite a tall one. Um, so just uh, bear that in mind, depending on what case you're using. And it's got six heat pipes and they're all six millimetres. And it's a pure copper heat pipes, aluminium fins, and nickel plated. And it is rated up to 210 watts, which is a lot for a low profile cooler. Um, so we'll see, like I say, how it performs. Right, so first of all, let's take a look at the fan that comes with it. Like I said, it does say high uh, performance fan. And looking at it, it does feel uh, really good quality. It is fairly heavy. Um, it does feel uh, really good quality, like I say. Um, really solidly built. Um, so it should be quite good. Uh, no. Not really any fan wobble to speak of, a hub wobble in, to speak of in terms of that. Um, vibration mounts on all the corners, and like I say, standard PWM connection four pin. And it has six, uh, sorry, seven blades, and obviously standard sort of cage at the back. Um, so not really much more to talk about on that, um, but we'll obviously we'll see how this performs. And then going over to the cooler itself, this is the cooler here. As you can see, like I say, six heat pipes on there. It's a nickel plated copper base. Um, it's not direct touch, it's a solid base, um, so that's quite nice. And uh, then obviously it's all painted black, so it looks really nice. will fit with anyone's build, really, and um, unless you're doing a white one. Um, and then obviously sort of like thermal right branding up here. Um, it looks really, really nice, really well finished. Um, feels pretty heavy as well, and it's got most of the mounting hardware already installed with these two holes here um, to put your screwdriver through to get to the uh, mounting screws. Uh, it doesn't come with thermal paste, uh, thermal paste applied, but you do get that with it, um, so that's nice. Um, so we'll get it installed, there's not really much, to sh much more to show you, we'll get it installed and we'll see how well it performs. Right, so there we have the SI100 from Thermalrite. Again, massive thank you to Thermalrite for sending us over for review, and it's absolutely awesome. Um, for a low profile cooler, yes, it's not the smallest, I understand that. Um, it has got some beefy heat pipes on it. Um, but for a low profile cooler that will fit quite a lot of builds, it's not gonna fit the smallest ones because it is quite chunky. Um, it performs really, really well um, and looks sound as well, looks really good. Um, it's just all black basically, so if you're doing an all blacked out, non-RGB build, this would look absolutely amazing in it. Um, but obviously, like I say, it is a standard 120mm fan as well, so if you want to put your own RGB fans on it and stuff, you can. Um, so that's the options there for that as well. Um, now in terms of performance, like I say, it was really, really good. Um, I was really impressed with it for a low profile cooler. Um, I'll mention the ambient temperature first. It's 17 degrees in here at the time of testing. 17 degrees here at the time of testing. 
Um, so obviously it gives you a bit of a better idea. I'm going to start including this on uh, cooler videos. Uh, it gives you a better idea of the temperature over delta as sort of how it performs. Um, so at idle, it was about 31 degrees. It did drop down to about 29, but it was hovering around 30, 31 for most of it. Um, so yeah, decent. Uh, so in terms of the testing, I did Cinebench, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Time Spy CPU test only, um, just to give a sort of uh, broad sort of idea of how it performs. Uh, Cinebench is obviously the worst case scenario, and it was multi-core and done for five minutes. So on Cinebench, um, we got a maximum of 75 and an average of 70, um, which is absolutely fantastic. I've seen big tower coolers get around the same same as that before. So. For saying this can, can compete with some decent sized uh, tower coolers um, is quite something to be honest with you. Obviously it's not going to be up there with your 360 IOs, it's, it's not designed to, to be up there with that but it is a 210 watt TDP um, so it does cool really well and could probably get some overclocking out of this as well. Um, and then the clock speeds were hovering around 4.25 to 4.3 throughout most of the tests um, so yeah decent clock speeds as well but Obviously, when it loads all the cores up on Cinebench, you don't get the highest clock speeds anyway. Um, so there is that. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so a bit of a gaming test. Um, we've got a maximum of 67. However, that was a spike, um, and it was pretty much around 56, 57 for most of the test. And the average came down to 53. And then clock speeds were between 4.5 and 4.6 for the majority of the test on quite a lot of the cores as well. And um, obviously, there was a few weaker cores on there that don't get that high. And then time spy CPU test, maximum of 65 and an average of 49 and clock speeds of uh, between 4.6 and 4.8 for most of the test. So again, an absolutely fantastic result. Um, it's, it's a really good cooler. Um, there's not really much more to say about it. Um, if you're looking for a low profile cooler that's fairly big in size, it's not the smallest low profile cooler, I have, as I have mentioned, um, then definitely consider this one obviously bear in mind the size of it so look at what case you've got and what you can fit in and then uh, look at the size of this as well uh, there will be a link in the description below so you can have a look at it and obviously get the information from there as well uh, I have mentioned the size of it uh, and then finally let's talk about the noise levels the noise levels it does say rated for 27.7 decibels that's a bit optimistic to be honest with you but then again that is probably the fan on its own um, rather than pushing air through a cooler Obviously, it's going to create a lot of turbulence and cause more noise. And also, I am using a phone app to test the decibel level, so it's not the most accurate, and there is more fans in my case. Where I have tried to turn them all the way down, um, some of them stop, or some of them, my Arctic ones, will stop. The other ones won't. Um, so there is going to be a little bit of extra noise from those fans. So at 50% um, speed, so 1,000 RPM, uh, 33 decibels, so it's not the quietest. Then at 75%, we're looking at 38 decibels, and at 100%, 45 decibels. So it does get quite loud. But again, like I say, um, there is other fans in my case. So that's that, guys. Um, there's the results, and that's how it looks. And my personal thoughts on it are it's really, really good. If you're looking for something like this, obviously it's not going to be for everyone, but if you're looking for a low-profile cooler that isn't the smallest um, and you're looking for an all-black cooler, then definitely consider this one. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, performs really well, looks pretty decent, and, uh, yeah, really impressed again by Thermal Right. Again, thank you for sending this out. If you like this video, uh, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already, uh, dislike it if you didn't like it, and also if you have any comments, please uh, don't hesitate to comment in the comment section below. I always try and get back to every single comment. Um, there may be some, be out, some I miss, but, but I do try my best. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.